Today, I'm going to show you what the cheat code is in order to rank up in both matchmaking, face it games, hubs, whatever you are playing. By the end of this video, you're going to have an understanding of what you need to do in order to win more games and provide value to your teammates. It's going to be some very important lessons we learned today. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So what are the cheat codes to get better guys the cheat code is going to be to do two things now let's go ahead and talk about the first one which is going to be an igl in your games right and a lot of you might be thinking already like oh i don't know how to be an igl i don't know what to do i don't know how to like calm and get people to do strats and all these different things and that's perfectly fine you don't have to be a full-fledged igl in order to take advantage of what will help you win right and that's going to be giving people direction on your team and telling them what they should be doing in the round when nobody has an idea right if nobody has ideas and nobody's talking you're more likely to lose the round because there's that disconnect there's not that ability to be on the same page very little cohesion and it's ultimately uh what leads most ct sites especially and t sites to fail is that lack of direction and purpose on what the strategy is for the round uh, before we get farther into it, let me give you a message about how to sell some CS2 skins. Thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Skins Monkey. They are one of the greatest and easiest to use CS2 trading sites out there. You can swap out the skins you do not like for brand new ones that are so much more fresh. Even skins that are trade locked can be secured by adding them to your backpack. The greatest thing about the site is that you can buy skins for so much cheaper with a 35% deposit bonus when you use my code, Kojo. Make sure to check out the freebie section where you can get a free skin just by completing tasks. On top of the bonuses, you also get a $5 bonus when clicking the link in the description. In order to be a good IGL in these games, it's very important to understand the fine line of when you need to hard call and give strats out and when you kind of need to let the team be free, right? And that's going to change player to player, game to game. It's really going to depend on a lot of circumstances, right? Uh, one thing that you can do in every round is ask the team. Just because you're IGLing doesn't mean you can't ask the team for feedback. So you could be like, hey guys, uh, what do you want to do this round? And you know, if they're like, I, I don't know, I don't, you could be like, okay, guys, let's go ahead and take long with two mollies here. I'm going to molly doors. One of you guys molly blue, the third guy flash. And at least we have our understanding of what we need to do on this side of the map, right? We have one guy throwing a molly doors. Don't throw a bad like me. And then you have another guy mollying blue. Boom. And then the third guy is back here getting ready for flashes. Why? Because we initiated that and we got everybody on the same page. I told them exactly what their jobs was were and I told them exactly what they needed to do. And guys, it's very easy. You can do some complex things even in pugs, right? So in my recent pug, one thing I did was I called that strat and then I was like, okay, I'm going to smoke deep and you're going to come indoors and boost me. So I walked through here with my teammate that came in and he crouched here, boosted me up and I played in here indoors. This is a very complex thing to do in a random pug or matchmaking game right because it, it's a lot of moving parts you've got to be able to take long control you've got to make sure nobody's coming out and then you've got to transition into the next phase if you can get good at understanding these little phases and how to uh position players and get them to be on the same page so one thing i'm saying if i'm flashing with my teammates is like yo do not peek sit corner and do not peek until my flash we're delayed taking okay now we go right if we're if we're going to be doing uh, this smoke take, right? For example, I'll be like, guys, I'm soaking doors. One of you molly blue and wait for my flashes to swing. Flashing now. Boom. And you can do stuff like that. Coordinate how to get a long take on Dust2, for example. Or on the flip side of things, you can be like, okay, guys, can we do a B crunch this round? I just need one of you. I just need one of you. The rest of you guys play A however you'd like. Um, I'm going to crunch through lower. I need you to crunch through upper. And let's do this play, right? And then again, anywhere you are on the map, if you can provide that direction to your teammates, you will find more success individually and as a team because there will be less chaos on your end. You're going to be creating more chaos for the other team to deal with, and you are not going to be having as much of that chaos on your end, which is extremely valuable in order to really like push your percentages and, and give yourself the best chance possible in these games, right? Uh, so very important, something that you have to be able to do. But you might be asking, okay, Kojo, that's cool. Um, but what is the other thing that I need to do in these games? So this is not for everybody, but an absolute cheat code, right? An absolute cheat code. Uh, if you find yourself in, you know, just face it, matchmaking, and, you know, especially playing at a lower level, it's going to be pulling out the op, right? And now don't be that player that, 
you know, just pulls out the op every game, especially when you have better teammates that are good oppers and you're like, no, I'm opping in this. But I'm telling you guys, opping inside of pugs, if you can play that role, is the cheat code to winning. Having a good opper is unstoppable in these games because people are not throwing proper util, right? They're not flashing over, they're not molly and car half the time. And if they do, it's like some bad molly that just lands in front. Dude, you can literally farm in these pugs by just opping. You kill one guy and another guy swings. You kill that guy and another guy swings. Like, there's very little coordination. There's very little, like, ideas flowing around from the other team. And it makes it really easy to find impact, right? Look at T-side dust too. You could jump into pit and post here the whole round and find so much impact. You literally could just sit here and people cannot help themselves. They really can't. They'll literally just sit here and start swinging you. They'll just start swinging CT, site, doing all these things. And... It makes it so easy to find impact when you're able to play that role specifically. So, um, you know, like I said, it, it's important though with, you know, opting that you understand that you are now uh, the most like valuable player on the team so that you can't be making so many stupid mistakes, right? So if you have the op, you know, make your plays to yourself, but understand that your role now is to be the impact fragger and to be the guy that's really you know using the one shot gun to its fullest abilities you're not the guy anymore that gets to just run in on t side and try to entry and kill as many people as possible like you know trying to no scope all the way to site doing these things right um so one thing i just want to know because i see a lot of players just pick up the op and they're just playing with it so bad right like they, they, they don't know what they're doing they're playing with it like a rifle right like instead of posting on like an angle like this or you know whatever they're sitting here like post on this right why is this bad guys because if you miss a shot in that corner they can just swing and kill you like this if you miss a shot right here oh no problem we, we back up a bit right we back up and post on our next angle right isolate these fights keep going and you know do our thing so just understand what you need to do if you're gonna be an opera and if you're not all good right i'll say everyone can be an igl in these plugs given you know a, a new game like you know, not always are you going to be an IGL, but everyone can provide that direction, but not everybody specific, specifically can be an opera or should be an opera. But if you know how to do it, it's just going to help you out so much, right? So how can we be the ultimate player? How can we actually take advantage of all this? Guys, when I was in FPLC and some of these lower tier hubs, it was so frustrating to play against me. And like, I know because people would always type to me all these things, blah, 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 whatever. And eventually I made FPL through FPLC is... What I would do is just op IGL, right? And not super hardcore IGL, but I'd do the same thing. I'd be like, okay guys, I'm going for a, a mid pick here. I need this from you. I need this from you. Uh, can you guys on B try to delay or, or block here, you know, stuff them like this. And you know, just giving people ideas. At the end of the day, it's, it's important sometimes to not sit there and be like, green i need you to play this corner on b and other person play car and the other person play on this pixel angle and, and you know be here give it give your players some freedom or they're gonna throw they're gonna not be engaged and they're not gonna have fun playing and they're just gonna start yelling at you right they're gonna think very little of you that's the difference between like being like a, a a leader in quotes and being a leader right a leader in quotes will sit there and demand things from the players and tell them exactly where they need to play and a actual leader will sit there and give direction and purpose and give them the ability to perform uh you know and do what they need to do now if a player is needing help if a player is struggling you can provide them that answer you can help them out if they're willing to accept it right like if your b player is like dude i just i keep getting popped on i like, i don't know what to do but you can be like man like instead of throwing your smoke early just burn your molly and then you know have your smoke out and if they hit you play around it right drop that smoke we'll come in with flashes and you can slink around and make some you know nice little plays with it right so give that per that purpose give that direction and, and provide that feedback if you want to win these games you've got to be a leader you can't be a follower only be followers when you know that you have extremely talented and solid players on your team that you can learn from and get better from but regardless guys at the end of the day never ever stop learning right that's one thing i try to do there's face level fives that i learn stuff from i coach guys face a level three players and face a level seven eight it doesn't matter who they are and sometimes i actually learn a lot from their demo i might be like so why did you throw that flash and they're like oh because this is a flash i saw like you know rops throw it. okay rops doesn't throw flashes but this is a flash that i saw jl throwing in a pug and it was really cool and i was like huh you know you, you might be onto something right like i'm gonna tweak it a bit and try to optimize it but i learned something from you so I learned so much from my uh, the students, the players I coach. And if you want to be one of those people, go ahead and fill out the form in the description of this video. I'd love to work with you, help you out. 
um, and offer my services to you. So without further ado, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Me personally, I'm going to be preparing for my Saudi Arabia event later this year in November. Going to be representing Team USA, and I could not be more happy about that. So appreciate every single one of you guys. Keep grinding, keep working hard, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace out. Peace out.